Hey, welcome into this edition of the Gasso Cast. We are back. It has been sometime, sometime, <laughs> March maybe. Uh, what have you been doing, Blue? Uh, resting, enjoying time with family. I've been home, uh, diving into my sports cards collections, and I finally started watching uh, TV. I'm not a TV watcher unless there's sports on in the background, but untold stories on Netflix. Free plug. Un, oh, un, no free un, shout outs. <laughs> un, untold stories is pretty phenomenal with uh, Manti Teo story and Tim Donahue. And you're about to watch this too, I think. I am. I am. I'm committed to them. Uh, I have been spending time with family. Um, I watched Top Gun Maverick. Uh, Eight times? Yeah. A l- probably a little <laughs> too much. It's just, it's just awesome, man. Um, and then fantasy football inundated. We have our. Uh, a Gasso yes. in-house draft tomorrow night. I wonder how that's going to go since we all know when we talk about our fantasy football teams in our other leagues. Right. We're all going to just go try to pick the same guy. Yeah, same guy. Um, and then uh, we golf around here every once in a while. I uh, shot a 75. That a boy. Feeling real good about myself. That a boy. Got some breaks, you know, Timmons. <laughs> yeah. For me, um, shoot, a little bit of golf, getting in some sun. Uh, fantasy football drafts. Just got back from the lake house with some of my boys. Um you know, just kind of mentally just resetting, you know, getting into better shape for the high school season. For me as a film guy, you know, I'm up there standing while y'all are sitting, so I got to get in that shape. But other than that, you know, not on Twitter as much, doing Twitter for other things besides grassroots. You know, I'm obviously, you'll see me follow Tiger Woods, Serena Williams, all that stuff like that. So really just mentally resetting, you know, the, the blessing is that, you know, we do this as a career. So a lot of times we need to make sure that our hobbies and our family time comes before this but we're excited for everybody else a lot of these kids have had a break over august and you know we're about to get right back to it absolutely we are fired up before we jump into the news i want to talk about two things first we have the 2024 rankings coming out this friday on our newsletter the gaso fast break you can find that on our twitter um linden has really really knocked it out of the park with a lot of that he is a you you probably if you've been a long time member you probably saw a significant jump when I've kind of like asked to, to pass some of that yeah. off on him, and he's just phenomenal. So shout out, Can we shout him out. No nope. free shout outs. Shout out. <laughs> shout out, Linda. Since he's not here, since he's not here. <laughs> and then um, the 2023 rankings was out on the last edition. Mm-hmm. Then we have Link Camp coming up, which we are super excited about. That blue. I'd love for you to expand a little bit more on that. We, we've done some diving into the camp scene, uh, just like here in Texas, and we're just trying to make it a little bit more of uh, an experience. Everybody wants the experience where we're bringing in college coaches. We're going to have Brian Holbright. I mean, just talking about September 10th, what's right around the corner. Brian Holbright, back-to-back, uh, junior college. Uh, he's over at Kilgore. Back Coach 35 yeah. pros. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's gone to back-to-back national tournaments in the JUCO. We have two uh, national championship uh, head coaches coming in also, from one from North Lake, Cedar Valley, and then we – no division threes, yeah. With, with Matt Gron and and we'll have um, uh, which one's this coming up? Oh, Southwestern, yeah, Connor, Trini, yep, um, Jared Fleming, UT Dallas. We got a yeah, lot of great all names, um, and that's a. But let me jump in there because that's the uniqueness of this. You're going to get a, get to see as a player different styles from different coaches from different uh, uh, walks of life on the uh, on the level of play. And I think that's very important because I don't – one thing that we want to educate parents and players on is that when you're in a city that allows for you to go watch multiple levels of play, divisions, whether it's Division One, Division Two, Division Three, take advantage of that. Right. Well, we're bringing that to you, and one style is going to be different from the other. And I just think just being out there in a couple uh, – well, 10 days from now, it's very unique. Yeah, intensity-wise, I yeah. think, you know, these kids will be held a little more accountable, you know. Oh. Like you said, you get that real life experience opposed to just rolling the ball out and saying, go hoop. You know, it's going to be a little more structure. You know, these coaches want to get out there and work and show you what this level is. A lot of kids just don't know what levels are. So it's going to be a good opportunity for them to see and hear from some of these masterminds that we have coming in. Yeah. And if you want to sign up, uh, greatamericanshootout.com, link camp. I don't know if if we could maybe put this in the description. It'll be in the description. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, oh, wait, wait, let me, I want to touch one more other thing because I'm Go. so excited about it. Keep one going, that, DJ well, Cowboy here's, here's, here's the final thing I'll say. 
these you talk about recruitment about these link camps we're bringing we're linking the players to the coaches and even the parents to the coaches and we've been doing that since 1988 however this is the, the uniqueness also is if you're sitting there playing hard and you're going at it the coach that's sitting there is going to take mental note and go oh wait this is probably a kid i should probably start recruiting yeah real start opportunity adding to us yes. real opportunity yes. and we we've really made a push for uh, you know kind of putting that word link to 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 an image because that's that's our goal man like that that is the heart behind um coach Mike, Kunstad. Yeah. that was um, his vision yeah it's his vision linking colleges um and players and and that's where we kind of sat down got in a, a little bit of a war room and and said how do we make this experience um something where we can link these guys in a room and it just it, it kind of been born out of that so very exciting time let's hop into the news here Trey Johnson, number one in the country. Timmons, don't sell me out. I'm doing the, <laughs> the finger up because I was at the Lake, Lake Highlands Duncanville uh, TABC game, and I just tweeted something very short and sweet. Best in the flag of the United States of America because that kid is phenomenal. Absolutely, man. And, um, you know, I get to see some of the behind-the-scenes work with him in his training sessions. Um, I got to see last year against Richardson, and I think consensus-wise, us in Texas, bi bias, we've always thought he's number one. You know, he had a really big time EYBL summer playing up with the 17 U. So I think well deserved and the kid works hard. And I'm glad um, that he's, um, spoiler, he's still in Texas. So because we're going to mm -hmm. be talking about that in a second. And he's coming to the SFL Classic September 10th. Yeah, 10th. We'll see you there. And, and Timmons, uh, you cover EYBL. You cover everybody's walk of life at the Adidas on Drummer <clears throat> when you get those opportunities to. And... It's, it's amazing of how great Trey Johnson is, and the to get that number one tag. I mean, it's it's the bias for me is, yeah, he's from Texas. Why shouldn't he be number one? Because you you're actually you see the best in the country, right? And so you're able to really come back with that stamp of approval and say, yeah, he should be. That, that's where he belongs. Absolutely. And he passes like the circle of friends test. And what I mean by that is like, all of my friends are kind of. They know about grassroots, you know, when someone's really special, they'll ask about them. Like they know about the top recruits in, in Texas. And I have random people texting Same. me Same. being like, oh. how good is this kid? Yeah. And, and Trey Johnson comes up when I'm, I was just at a bachelor party last weekend and they're like, so I've heard there's this kid from Lake Highlands. That's, exact, that's exactly <laughs> how my conversations go. And I just get, you know, I know that something's a little different yeah. about the kid. If like my casual, not really in this world friends know about how good this guy is so i thought that's a, a kind of a, a funny way to describe um how how special he is and i was saying last year during all the high school games that i saw i mean like hey take advantage of how cheap this ticket is because it won't be that cheap for long <laughs> um and then that stands so um shout out to him shout out um you know great for the state yeah um moving on to signings and commitments we're not putting that in the newsletter like we usually do this um like we usually do, um, because it's kind of just slowed. It's come to a, a halt. Everybody's kind of starting school. Uh, two guys I want to shout out. Josh Jones committed to Oral Roberts last night, this morning? Uh, days. Two or three days, days ago. Yeah. Two, three days ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then Avant Coleman signed with Harcum College last week, or it might have been you know, 10 days ago. But he's on campus rolling out. And then, obviously, congratulations to both of them. Moving on. Discussion question. I want to throw this out to you all. Players going prep, it's, it's, it's a part of our landscape. So just kind of give me some thoughts um, in, in, in your headspace of what's going through your mind when, when you're seeing players leave. Tim, you, you go first, man. Um, for me, right off the bat, like, I'm excited for anybody that has an opportunity to better themselves. And, um, you know, there's, prob there's a lot of decisions that go in with each of these players' circles within their families, their coaches, and stuff like that. So I know that everybody's making that decision and – like, I don't ever think – I'm not good or bad decision. I'm not on that. I'm just happy for you. You have a decision. Go represent Texas when you go. Because regardless, you know, they know where you're coming from. So go put on for the state. Um, but then also I'm excited for new narratives to be created. You know, there's plenty of talent here in the state. And for us as a staff, you know, we get excited to cover every level of basketball. And even going to this high school season, we've seen some special performances being put on as you navigate through the uio high school scene mm -hmm. so there's going to be a lot of new storylines and new a lot of players rising to the to the top and i mean when you look at our rankings and just look at the list of players still in texas i mean it's it's still loaded 
And a lot of these guys are going to get the opportunity to like really be the forefront and put on for the state while they're here. And I'm still I'm so excited for that. Yeah, I mean, the conversations that we have just during rankings, even when you take out four or five guys, there's four or five guys that we're still battling for and saying, hey, this, this is a top 20 kid, you know, and I think the depth of Texas is that's why college coaches come here in big numbers. You know how many the phone calls I receive? Probably blue, you, daily. you blue, you get phone it's, calls. Yeah, I'm old school. Oh, okay. I'm old school. Oh, I'm just making sure. No, oh, they call you too. They, they call you too. Yeah. Okay. So the college coaches, I didn't know they, if they called want, us. Oh, okay. They call you. They call Gasso too, right? Uh, hey. Okay. Any time. I'm dead. It, I, <laughs> My bad. I didn't know. I didn't know you're not screaming that they're calling <laughs> no, you. So I mean, I don't hey. publicize it. But um, point being is that when they do contact. They see the depth, and they don't even care. They're, I'm talking to somebody yesterday who's a mid, eh, a mid majors program, and they're saying, "Oh, you got so and so at number." I'm just throwing it. Don't go running no. to the rankings. <laughs> number one thirteen. We like them. We're going to recruit them. It's that kind of depth. Everybody wants to be in the state of Texas. We know that the landscape's changed because of the portal, but that's what makes it even better and easier to come to the state of Texas. Come steal one of those guys. And so the depth is not the question. I mean, you know, you talk about the discussion really of they're leaving state. How do you feel? I, I feel sad when somebody leaves. Uh, I mean, it's it's because you want more. Tra- the more traffic to your state, the better. And we bring up UIL. There's not a more special stage in, for a state. I'm not talking about nationally. You can probably argue that going to a national tournament and playing on ESPN is much better than UIL. Okay. But for public school going to the UIL, playing in front of it's special. eight to 10 to 12,000 fans in San Antonio. Tyrese Maxey took advantage of it, <laughs> scoring 46 one in, in the semifinals game. Uh, Just you, creates you a can, story, the yeah. storyline. It's magical. Not to, not to mention, yeah. it's a whole united front of our media, of, of all of Texas media, which is so well done. There's so many great people pouring out with great content, and it's such a cool stage. And when, and when you look at I, I, I can talk about this for hours just because I, I, I love the history of the game. I mean, and, and for like De'Ari and Fox not to get to San Antonio, the state missed out on that. I feel like the same with Case and Wallace yeah. this year. Yes. You know, and, so. and Ronald, like I just felt that. I was like, yeah. dang, man, I wish some, pe- some of these people were, were able to witness how yeah. just great this kid was. Yeah. So. You know. and, and I'll scream it right now. Trey, Trey Johnson, he's staying. And that's. That's a big part of Texas basketball right there. And if it's, th- if it's their year, maybe it's this year that they're going to get to state and everybody's going to see that guy and, and, and see him perform. And, and uh, the ticket's still cheap at state. Yeah, I think really well said by both of you all. Um, and it's, it's still such an exciting time to do what we do in the state of Texas. So I feel really, really great about that. Absolutely. Let's move into some different things. So, we, like I said earlier on our newsletter, that's where we release our rankings. It's two dollars a month. Um, oh, hey, two bucks. Two bucks. Yeah. Y'all, so if y'all, y'all, y'all on... quit. Y'all quit texting me. I see y'all going on y'all's vacations. I see what you're doing on the weekends. Y'all can afford this two dollars. Two dollars. Uh, How much does a cup of coffee cost from Starbucks? Two seventy six. Two seventy four. No, no, fr- no free shout out. <laughs> no free shout out. No free shout out. Oh, uh, Sorry, this is really good. Coke coffee. coffee elite. Hi, major. Okay. We better get a sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we released the 23 rankings. And, you know, it's, it's rankings are funny because sometimes they just don't fit schemes and they don't, they don't fit the box of sometimes what they are. But we do want to talk about some guys who have made major jumps in our rankings that we just enjoy watching. I mean, if you're in our rankings, if you're in the best of the rest, we think you're a college prospect. Absolutely. Period end of story. And that's, that's high praise. There are... How many seniors yeah. in Texas? Nobody, not everybody can be ranked. Let's yeah. just put it out there. And, and it's a and, lot of work. <laughs> and it, and it's, a, it's a true – we can go all the way down to 300 or 400 if we want, but if you're in our database, you're a college prospect, and you saw that if you're getting the newsletter to see all of those names on there that we still think very highly of you. Yes. Facts. So and, hey, there's going to be college coaches go, you don't have this guy ranked? Man, I love him. I'm going to go recruit him. Go do it. Absolutely. And guess what? We'll go watch him too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, Timmons, a guy who rose in the ranks, um, and for good reason. It's 12 o'clock. It is 12 o'clock. Timmons, tell us your guy. Jalen Bernard, Cy Ranch. Um, we, can I get, are we giving the number? Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. 
uh, number 32 in our 2023 rankings. You know, he's finally healthy. So when you pair up being finally healthy, and we all agree that winning matters, that Houston Defenders team this, this uh, summer. They were awesome. They were awesome. We saw him on film. Oh, I saw him on film yeah. a bunch. So you see, the, you see the quick first step. You see the explosiveness. I mean, he's dunking on kids again. I mean, I've, I loved this kid when he was a freshman. Um, Longwood commit. All, everything's starting to work back in his favor, and I know him and his family have trusted that process and just continue to work, and I know they've had their ups and downs with his health, but he's back now. He's ready to go, and he's prime in our rankings, um, and he's going to have a really big senior season. Blue? Uh, Jaden Bars. Dunk of the year. <laughs> Oh, well, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that when you look at that athleticism and you take in account that uh, he defends and he's a guy that's that's willing to kind of get dirty as a guard and this, he's got some skill to him and knock down some perimeter shots, but he's so strong and powerful and the speed to the, to the basket, he does really have a different level of athleticism. And that's a he, he moved up uh, from 78 to 41 and – which is good because he still has a, a little bit more uh, uh, ability to, to move up the rankings if, <clears throat> if, if that's the final goal for somebody like him. But he's going to get a scholarship. He's going to be playing basketball for free at the next level. And I thought that he really asserted himself in the summer by playing with ASAC and showed more than just sitting out and just trying to knock down threes, which I saw during the season last year. And, and he has a, a, a head coach of uh, John Smith coming in that's Going to use, utilize him the right way. So uh, be ready for probably more noise from him. Absolutely. I'll jump in here. Jeremiah Charles, Arlington Martin, played with GPS West Texas. Um, this cat is just – he's so fast. He defends. He does all the things that Arlington Martin guards do. Um, but something that I really, really enjoy watching about him is these – I guess he's not a small – I'm 6'1", six, 6'2", six, six, but he'll go like pin a ball on the, on the backboard. And it's just like kind of this special athleticism with this end-to-end speed. And then he really started to develop as a point guard. Jeremiah Charles, he jumped from 164 to 93. A significant, significant jump. And I can't wait to see more from that Arlington Martin team uh, throughout the season and September 10th at the Gasso Fall Classic. Awesome. Let's move into um, rising in the ranks in 24s. Like Matt said, we're dropping them this Friday in our newsletter. Um, we'll give you a little preview. So I'll go ahead and start. So... When I pick a kid like this that was already in the top 20 and moves into the top 10, like there's a tier level there that's exp- like it's a it's a big jump still. Yes. He may have only moved up nine spots from 19 to number 10, but Koala Attack from Haltom, um, you can say whatever you want. I've, I've seen this kid where he like the mid post game is unreal. You know, some are going to say, oh, he needs to adjust the physicality and things like that. But I've seen him. He's he's he, he's creating contact, getting to his spots. The turnaround jump shot, like the size, the length, it's all there for me. I'm huge on this kid. And I like seeing prospects that we know there's more that he can get better at and he's going to. But seeing what he has now, the skill set is undeniable. He gets he cracks the top ten in our ranking. Yeah, that's that's a big one. Um, I'll just kind of give you two guys. I was down between two Carter guys, funny enough. <laughs> I looked at the list and I circled Cole Williams and then I circled Chance per year. Um, and Ch- I'm, I'm going to go with Chance here again. Cannot wait to watch Carter, the Gasso Fall Classic, September 10th. They are, man, they got a chance uh, this year. But they got some really, really nice players. And I'll, I'll jump more into Chance. Every time I see Chance, he moved from 18 to 13, he's better. Um, this guy's rangy, athletic. And from what I thought, he kind of played the 4-5 the role as a freshman, sophomore. And now he's kind of moving into this wing role. He's starting to knock shots down. It's just such an encouraging sign to see consistent development. Um, And when you're that big, that athletic, it shows that you can guard a lot of people. He takes charges. He blocks shots. He can knock down a shot. He's really good in transition. A lot to like about chance per year. Absolutely. Blue? Well... Uh, Braden uh, Hawson from Amarillo. He was he was not ranked, and then we, all of a sudden he pops up at 42. Uh, this is a tongue twister. He's Braden, and his brother is uh, Brendan. Brendan, who <laughs> who was a shooter, and he was a complete leader. When you look at uh, Braden here in the 2024 class, he's a guy that stretches it out, six seven, shoots the three, has skill, completely different player, different player from his brother. But man, he's that those that those gears are starting to turn, and he looks really good. I think that uh, you know Jason Pillen, the the head coach there, at Amarillo. They they have been a 
uh, coming to Gasos for a year this year. They took a step back. He's trying to get the players at that high uh, elite caliber that he's had in the past uh, three to four years uh, with his seniors leaving last year. So uh, we, we won't see him until the season, but everything that we saw makes total sense of how good in the trajectory of where he's going. Six, seven shooters don't grow on trees. <laughs> no. Like, Facts. Like that, that, that in and of itself, um, elite footwork too, just special, special type of shooter. Let's jump into the Gas of Fall Classic. Um, we have worked on the schedule. It is awesome right now. We are <laughs> going to do a matchup show next week, so don't, don't, don't get it twisted. That's coming. We wanted to more focus on players, and we have two star-studded stats for you about our Gas of Fall Classic. Of our top 20 kids in the state in the 2023 class, 11 of, are from Dallas. Nine of them are coming. That's so exciting. Of our top 20... In the, top tw- in the 2024 class that are from Dallas, nine of ten are coming. Yep. So we feel like this event is going to be incredible. And, Timmons, I know we were just talking about, like, it's awesome that the coaches are just trusting us with Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah, no. With this thing is, like, I mean, yeah, those, those stats are, are great, but thank you for the schools and, and the teams and the coaches for trusting us this early on. You know, we're blessed enough in this state to have a lot of teams that want to play basketball. So with that comes the... That are good. Yeah, that are good. So, you know, these numbers are a credit to the state of Texas with the talent that we have. So we're so excited. And like we said, we're going to have a matchup show next week. Yeah. Um, but for now, let's look into a couple some players that we're excited to see. And I'll kick it off with Dink Pate coming back. Ooh. And not just back to Texas, not just back to DFW, but back to Pinkston. He's comfortable there. He's comfortable uh-huh. there. He was real loud at yeah. Uh, TABC. Yeah. <laughs> really, really good. Looking to continue that legacy, uh, and I know that he's so proud to put that Pinkston jersey on, and that city and that community is so excited to have him back. So I'm just excited to see that energy continue. Yeah, a guy I saw at Memorial Day, Caden Myers, uh, mm-hmm. was really, really good with Crab 5. I mean, electric. And then, unfortunately, uh, at TABC, he didn't play. He had some sort of uh, – Injury on the concrete, yeah, some sort of concussion. I don't know exactly the details, but I've just been dying to see him play again. Uh, He was on my list of must-watch 2024s for TABC before I heard that news, Uh, and I'm I'm just excited to go see him for a second time. Uh, David Terrell, you're talking about a guy that gets it on the defensive end. The first thing you think of or I do is defense, and he became a star. In the EYBL. And he showed that he was able to uh, take what he had learned from, from, from Mansfield Summit and take it to the EYBL and use that as his strength. And he's become a really nice floor leader. I'm really, really excited to see him because there's never a superstar on an Edmund Pritchett team, coach team, because they are always a unit. They're going to guard you as a team 94 feet. They're going to get after you. You don't see too many times guys averaging double digits, but what is he, what's his role going to be, and how is he going to slip back in there and be the team player? And, oh, by the way, if that happens, that still that does not lower him in any way. That just shows you how strong he is in, in his abilities to be a team player and to get everybody involved. I, felt, I, I put him in the newsletter. We're also kind of doing this series in the newsletter of our favorite yeah. players from the summer, and we're doing going by position, and we're at Wings this week, and I put David Terrell down, and I felt kind of uncomfortable about it because I'm like, I've seen so much growth in the other parts of his game, yeah. to, right. to your point. So, David, I see you. Don't, don't worry about that, but just like, man, you're – He can go to one, two, or three. That's, yeah. that's a huge accomplishment, and, can, and everybody recruiting him is excited about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Moving on, uh, our Gasso Next Gen product. We, we're talking about you know freshmen, sophomores. Tim and hit us with it. Yeah, so you know we're excited. A lot of these 2025s are ready to take another leap. And I'll start with um, the two kids I talk about a lot from Argyle with uh, Cash Polk and Jet McCaslin. Um, both of these guys made their debut at the TABC, and um, they worked really well with each other. You know, uh, Cash Polk um, this summer has had a lot of growth. He's starting to look like one of those prospects at 6'9 already. Can stretch can it. Can stretch it. Can handle it now. You know, he's blocking shots for that Proskis EYBL team. And Jet McCaslin, like anytime he's in any type of event, he's going to be one of my favorite players there. So to continue to see this Argyle team that has history of going deep and, and making big-time state runs, you know, these two are going to be very some bright spots as our gas on next-gen in that 2025 class. I'll jump in here. 20, uh, Hillcrest, 
They are full of awesome 2025. You got King Grace with the size and the skill and just the scary ability um, to just go bonkers. Then you have Mike Williams with the athleticism that I'm here is like just booming right now. Cannot wait to see him. Then Jed Nancha, the anchor um, man, just the, the probably a just one of the most polished young players that we have in our state. So really excited for that Hillcrest group. Yeah, I'm finish this part off here with dynamic prep. I mean, having to watch Jaden Toombs, Jermaine O'Neal Jr., Leroy Kelly, and Jordan Lowry on one team. Uh, you get a lot of work done when you go sit at one court when you can see four dudes. Yeah. Four dudes <laughs> at one time. And so uh, these guys have been playing with each other for a long time. So I'm sure the chemistry is going to be there for them. And to be able to see their growth from when I saw them uh, in, the, in the spring and a little bit in the, in the, in the summer um, should be fun. I mean, th- th- this, is, this is the time that we t- collect those 2026s you get exactly that's what i was going to say like after after september 10th there's going to be so many 2026s on our radar yes um and if you're if you're watching this now go ahead and let us know some of these 2026s we need to be ready to see september 10th the colony and grapevine yeah oh yeah they they got some dudes. oh facts they got some dudes oh yeah my boy x yeah Yeah. and and with the 2025s we start collecting the names increase the names that we already have and then in late January, early February, there comes the first rankings for that class of 2025. It's exciting. Hey, thanks for tuning in this edition of the Gasso Cast. Make sure you're following us on all uh, social media platforms at Texas Hoops Gasso. Then you can kind of find everyone from there. It's pretty easy. Gasso Mass, iPhone Hoopers, at Gasso Blue, at Gasso Linden, Tim, Laren. We got them all. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for tuning in.